Williams 604450DS. This is the date and time schedule for a couple of matters. Uh, motion in order to show cause and also defendant's motion for change in custody and parenting time and child support. Ms. Kristen Williams is present in the courtroom. Jacob Hughes, uh, is that Jacob with you, Mr. Gould? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Gould representing uh, Jacob Hughes and Jacob Hughes are both present via Zoom at the same Zoom location. Ms. Williams, you're here today without an attorney. Are you prepared to proceed today without an attorney? Yep. Yeah. All right. Mr. Gould, why don't you go ahead and tell the court uh, why we're here and what you're asking for? Sure. Uh, Your Honor, this um, originally was scheduled for a show cause um, simply because uh, Ms. Williams does have primary custody of the minor child, Emma Hughes. Um, and about the end of September of this year, she informed my client that she did not have um, a proper place um, to raise Emma. Um, she didn't have a house. She was couch surfing. She didn't have a job. And it was becoming too much to take care of Emma. Previously, she had had a similar situation um, at the beginning of this year. And from January to about June of 2022, Emma was living with Mr. Hughes. Um, apparently this time, though, in the fall, when mother did not have a proper place for Emma, she decided that Emma was going to live with her mother, with Emma's grandmother, down in Florida. And I believe that move happened the early October of 2022, which is in direct violation of, of the court order in that mom cannot move the child's residence out of this state. Um, father was informed that this was going to happen. He protested. Um, it happened anyway. After he learned that Emma's schooling had been changed to Florida and that this wasn't just a family trip um, or anything like that, that is when he requested uh, this, this show cause hearing. Um, we're, I, I don't know what specifically um, the judge, uh, the court would do to uh, hold her in contempt, but clearly she has violated the court order um, and something needs to be done. At the very least, Emma does need to be returned to Michigan. In the meantime, um, because mother clearly has no way of caring for Emma, uh, we're asking that custody be changed um, so that father has primary physical custody. Um, I imagine that we're not going to have enough time to hear that entire uh, motion and present all of the evidence today because uh, we have such a short time. But in the in the temporary, if we could at least have a uh, temporary parenting time order so that Emma is in Michigan and Emma is seeing father on a regular consistent basis and that parenting time be unsupervised, uh, that's what we would like from today. Thank you. Mr. Gould, can you tell me last time your client saw the minor child? Um, hold on. Was it September? Mm -hmm. it was, it was, it? The, the end of September around, uh, for Emma's birthday party. Thank you. Uh, Miss Williams, a yes. response to what he has stated? So she did go with my mother, but that's for Emma's best interest because there's been incidents at dad's house. The reason she wasn't going was because there's been incidents at dad's house where she's come back and told me that she's been physically touched by his nephew. So I don't feel it's safe that she goes with him. He's, since she's been in Florida, he's talked to her four times. And my mom's never told him he can't call her. He's, she's never, even I've never, even from September, before September, he didn't see her for two months. He chooses when he gets to be dad. And when she comes home from his house, her attitude's a completely different child. How old is she? She's seven. And what is your long-term plan? You just decided grandma's going to raise the child? No, she went down there for schooling. And when school's over, she's going to come back. I did sign legal guardianship to my mother. Through what court? It wasn't through court. We have like a notarized paper. So you gave her a durable power of attorney? Yes. Okay. Just for the duration so that she could go to school because at her dad's house, she he wasn't giving her her medication that she needed. 
I have several times where she's come back and she hasn't had her medicine. You realize you can't give legal custody away to someone else when you have an active court order without getting permission from me. You can't move her out of state, so you're not supposed to do that. Okay, I didn't know that. If she has to come home, then she has to come home. That's fine. Where are you living? I live in Big Rapids at the time. We're actually, we're looking to move into a bigger house. Who lives with you in Big Rapids? It's me and my friend and her kids. Are you working? Yes. Why don't you have your daughter in your care? Um, she had gotten to the point where she was telling me that she hated me because of her dad. Why does she hate you because of him? Like every time that she'd come back from her dad's house, she'd be like, I hate you. How come you let her go live with dad? That's what their allegation is. She went and stayed with dad because at the time he was doing things the right way. How long did she stay with him? She stayed from the beginning of January until the end of the school year. But I was, I physically was seeing her every, uh, every weekend to every other weekend. So he lived, she lived with dad for six months, mm. January to June. I don't think the whole time, no, because she came home as soon as, like, I think it was May. I don't think it was June. I think it was May. And even then, I was the one that had to keep asking, hey, is she getting her meds? Is she getting this? Because he doesn't do it. How come neither one of you filed a motion back then when you switched custody? Mr. Hughes, were you paying child support during that time? Yes. So you were paying child support to her even though you had the child? Yes. How come you didn't file a motion to get custody and parenting time changed? I wasn't thinking of it. I was just thinking of having my daughter. Have you been talking to her in Florida? I have called her on video chat. He's called her four times. I literally talked to my mom this morning and I have all four dates that he's talked to her and she has to call him. It's not my seven-year-old responsibility to call her dad. Mr. Hughes, have you talked to uh, the maternal grandmother about the situation? He knows that I'm not happy that she's down in Florida. Okay. You haven't really talked to her about the plan moving forward? What no. She thinks the plan is. No. The last custody order that Enter gave her full custody and parenting time as you guys agreed on. Is that right? Yes. Supervised. Right? Supervised? It wasn't supervised. I don't. The order dated 12 1 17 does not say supervised says times and places with conditions as agreed upon by the parties. The uh, 2018 order. So, so let me look, I have a 2017 order. Do you have an order dated 2018? Uh, August 27, 2018, signed by Michael Page. And what does that order say? It is also ordered that the defendant shall have parenting time supervised by his mother the child's paternal grandmother, alternating Saturdays from noon till 6 p.m. That was after father had filed a motion uh, regarding custody and his motion was denied. Ah, uh, no, that's 17. All right, after that order entered in 18, Mr. Hughes, did you see your daughter? Yes. And did your mom supervise? Yes. How often were you seeing her? I don't remember how long. Um, was. Were you guys doing a schedule or was it just when you guys agreed upon? Was it every other weekend? Was it was it every other weekend. Okay. Why was supervised parenting time granted? 
Because he disappeared. Mr. Hughes, why did they give you supervised parenting time? I don't remember why, but I always work. Mr. Hughes, I'm going to set this, or Mr. Gould, I'm going to set this matter for a hearing in front of the referee uh, regarding the motion to change custody and parenting time and also the show cause. I'm going to get that scheduled as quickly as I can, but that's probably going to be after the holiday season. My question to you and your client is, knowing what you know about mom, uh, do you believe it's in the child's best interest to remain with grandma until we can get that hearing or you want the minor child? Are you asking for the minor child return to moms with that last custody and parenting time order? Uh, give me just a moment to confer with my client. Your sure. Honor. Yep. Your Honor, if... Um... If Ms. Williams' testimony is correct, that she does have a place to live that is safe and satisfactory, um, and if we had a um, set court-ordered temporary parenting time schedule of maybe every other week or every other weekend, um, Mr. Hughes would be perfectly fine with having Emma return to Michigan so that he could see her. Ms. Williams' response. I don't want him to see her for a whole weekend. He doesn't give her her medicine. What medicine does she take? <laughs> she takes an inhaler to breathe. She takes a singular because she has asthma. Like he doesn't give it to her. And as a father, he should. So she has asthma <laughs> and you're saying she doesn't get her inhaler when she's at dad's house? Her inhaler, the medicine that she takes every single night. Mr. Hughes, are you familiar with those medications that your daughter's on? I am. I have given her her medicine. I actually had to call her doctor and get and get medicine for my house so then I could have it because Kristen wasn't I, always I giving me the medicine. Don't interrupt her. Don't. Go ahead, Mr. Hughes. So there was some there was some days that I went and got Emma. And Kristen was all like, oh, I don't have her medicine. It's still at my mom's house, and I would never get it. Do you have that medication now? I don't have it. Uh, the mo uh, Kristen has it last time I knew. Okay. Is your mom there in that room with you today? No. no. Okay. Is your mom still willing to supervise? Uh, my mom works. Okay. On the weekends? Yep. Okay. So who would be available to supervise? Your Honor, he does have a, uh, a live-in. Live with. Okay. He does have a live-in significant other at the moment who has two children of her own. What's her name? Samantha. Samantha what? Arredondo. Can you spell that for me? Uh, we'll say it again because I missed it. Arredondo? Yeah. Okay. How long have you been dating her? Nine months. How many kids does she have? Two. What's her custody and parenting time arrangement? Uh, her kids live with her full time. Do they see their dad? Once in a while. Okay. As they agree on or is there a schedule? Yeah. Yeah, which one? As they agreed on. Okay. Uh, does she have any child protective services history that you're aware of? No. Does she have any felony convictions? No. Is she on probation or parole? No. Are you on probation or parole? Nope. Do you have any felony convictions? Nope. Anyone in your household on the sex offender registry? Nope. Ms. Williams, I assume you don't know his significant other? I do have met her once. Okay. What were the concerns with dad's home that required supervised visitation the last time? Um, it wasn't even his home. It was the fact that he flaked on our daughter again for six months at a time what does that mean like he just he dropped her off one time and then 
disappeared for six months and then wanted to take her for a week again. And I was like, no, that's not happening. And that's when he ended up getting supervised visitations. And if he does, if you do allow him to have visitations again, then he needs to not go to his mom's house because that's where his nephew lives, that our daughter has said that he has touched her inappropriately in spots. No. Your Honor, as far as I'm aware, there's been no CPS investigations. What was the plan for Christmas? Were you going to see your daughter? Uh, I planned on it, but then I have to work. I work both Christmas Eve and Christmas night. So I'm just going to FaceTime her like we always do every single night. You guys have messed this up so bad. I, I, it's so frustrating to me when there's a court order and you guys do something different, then you do something different again and something different again, and nobody comes to court. Now, you know who's suffering? This little girl. She's not Be suffering. She is, she is in a place where she is loved and taken care of. You're delusional. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. If you think your child's not suffering when her mom is here in Michigan and she is in Florida with your mother, I don't care what house your 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 mother's running. I don't care how fabulous her life is in Florida. If you think she's not suffering because she's not with her mom and dad, you're wrong. And you're creating a big problem for your daughter. Her dad doesn't care about her. Yeah. How would you know that? Because he disappears on her all the time. Well, he hired an attorney and came here today, filed a show cause on his own, went and hired an attorney. I su suspect he cares. Now, did he make some mistakes? Probably. Haven't we all? Now what am I supposed to do? I order her return from Florida on Christmas and Christmas Eve. You're going to be working and she's going to stay where? It should show that he doesn't care. He's literally talked to her four times and she's had to call him. My seven-year-old is responsible to call him. No, she's not. She's seven. <laughs> he should be man enough to pick up the phone and call her every day, right? Your Honor, as it regards, <laughs> as it regards the holidays, when, when I was talking with my client earlier about whether Emma should be returned to Michigan, he was fairly certain that uh, he would not be able or allowed to see Emma during that time. Um, it was only with the idea that there would be a temporary order um, that he would be okay with Emma returning. Um, if, if there isn't going to be any sort of um, confirmation or guarantee that he's going to see Emma over the holidays or, or in the interim, um, I think it would be better for Emma to stay in Florida. But My concern is this. She hasn't seen him in a while. She's little. I would, in if in a perfect world, I would have a graduated schedule where she'd see him, you know, a couple hours and a longer time and a longer time. And that's not really all that doable. And now she's going to come back here. Her mom's going to be working, which I don't, I, I understand mom has to work, but then she's going to be with these third parties that she probably doesn't even know. Um, I just don't feel great about that situation. And I suspect mom or dad don't feel great about that either. Um, the court's going to uh, allow the minor child to remain um, in the state of Florida until that next hearing, um, allow dad uh, the phone contact that he's getting. Uh, dad, has there been any issues with you being allowed to talk to the minor child? No, it's just when I have time from work because I'm a, I'm a DS supervisor for public schools. And so I'm working morning through night. So it's, you know, just finding the time to, you know, take a break and, you know, call her. What's a DS supervisor? District supervisor. What do you do? I 
Uh, like you're managing a, the buildings? Yeah, I'm a custodial for schools. Yeah, so you're managing the buildings and making sure everything's where it's supposed to be and all the people are where they're supposed to be. Yes, and I'm working morning and night. Okay. Miss uh, Williams, it's likely that I'm going to order the minor child returned to the state of Michigan or the referee as at some point in time. You can't just allow a minor child to move, let alone with a third party. It would be one thing if you had moved to better her and your lives, but you can't just give her to a third party uh, without a court order. I haven't heard all the facts and circumstances. I'm not familiar with this case. Never had you guys in front of me before. I'm going to set a hearing with the referee in regard to the order to show cause and the motion for custody and parenting time. What I'm telling you is you need to prepare for the fact that she will likely be ordered returned to Michigan. So you need to think about what that looks like as far as daycare and child care. In the meantime, Mr. Hughes will be allowed whatever phone contact uh, is necessary to maintain his relationship with the minor child, and the court will get it on with the referee as quickly as I can, Mr. Gould, so that we can try to get your client uh, some more significant parenting time and arrange to get the child returned to Michigan. Um, any questions for the court today? Would you like me to prepare the order, Your Honor? Uh, that would be fine. Thank you, sir. All right. No other questions. Uh, my staff will reach out to your office to get a date that's agreeable. Miss Williams, make sure that they have your current address because that's where you're going to get your notice. The hearing will be with the referee. He's doing a lot of those by Zoom, so pay attention to your pleading. You may be able to do it by Zoom. Anybody who you want to testify, you need to have present at that hearing. If, if it is by Zoom, they can just call into the Zoom room and they'll wait there until it's their turn to testify. Okay. Anything else for the record today, Mr. Gould? Oh, thank you. Thank you all. We're adjourned.